record video. Okay, so welcome to Realm of Clans Gaming for Gosh. Um, this is Fox you can hear, this is Ojin you can see on screen. Yep. Um, sort here. of. I'll just pick up the camera. So here he is, that's Ojin. <laughs> and <laughs> we're doing... <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a big unboxing of the Warhammer Horus Heresy Dark Age. Um, it's got sent to me as a birthday gift. Um, we're actually planning to paint this live at some point, possibly even for Gosh. Um, so, we'll yep, yeah, here we are, unboxing. What would you like to say, Ojin? Uh, we're just getting everything ready uh, so that we can actually uh, paint this for um, Gosh. Um, we're going to do it as a Dark Angel, so... Um uh, army in a Horace Heresy with eventually Lion L. Johnson, it's the Primarch that will be heading it with uh, other contempt uh, uh, dreadnoughts as well added to it and probably other vehicles eventually. And we'll do that for Game for Gosh. And uh, if we end up just doing one model uh, for the entire month because they are pretty big and very detailed models, that would be great because it will show how detailed they are. We'll go from cleaning up the models when we're cutting them out to space spray paint uh, base spray painting them and then we'll go uh, through gluing as well as actually painting the models bit by bit and showing how the army will grow from one model to eventually a big army which will then show off on gosh at the end when it's done okay. that's what we're hoping to do so, so excuse my camera work. I'm using the net cam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's doing a good job. Even if my head is cut off now again. <laughs> you're, um, only miss, you're only catching the bottom bit of my beard. So that <laughs> Trust me, I'm making him grow this beard because I want to plait it like Odin's beard so that he can you live up to like his name. You just like tickling that. <laughs> yeah, that, that as well. Okay, so... Um, Yep, uh, we're doing this for gosh. Oh, good yep. grief. I'm sorry, people. The parts of me you can see are a bit scary. <laughs> That's the front box. So, yep. Front of it there. And this is the back. Okay, so if I get this, I mean, I could... I'm not using OBS at the moment. I am using Tw Twitch Studios beta because I keep finding it's better for this kind of thing. Um, so, yep, the that's the back of the box. We've already taken it out of the delivery box because we didn't want you seeing our personal information on it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I will be trying to record with a very limited space because m unfortunately my phone is um, playing, up. playing up and not wanting to record. So I'm having to do this with my Nexigo webcam <laughs> <laughs> by hand. And it's all wired to the PC. So yeah. the PC is literally just here where you can see my hand. Uh, right sort here. of, which is about <laughs> here. Um, so yeah. Um, I've got my streaming light on, and as you can probably hear, we're using the best microphone to do it. Yeah. Okay, so, Ojin, would you like to open the box? Okay, I'll take this off. Well, the good thing about this, it's easy to take that off, and then, slowly but surely, there it is box is unearthed and that's what we see inside and that is a lot of bits that is a lot as you see why i suggested doing them one at a time so this is the measurement ruler um for various parts that's the in temp game templates for um grenades flamethrowers another heavy artillery basically angle range yeah. things yeah these are some of the marines bodies there bring it closer marines bodies there as you can see it's very easy to put together there's these are the um terminators well they're not exactly called terminators i can't remember the actual name but i think they're contemptor terminators right there the slightly different more bulkier so put them there. these are the two primaris lords there you see the cloaks on the back 
to allow you to do detail upon them and make them look a, hell of, a lot better. I'm assuming, of course, my camera is going to pick this up. So if I just do that and put it into the light, you can just yeah. see. So we know it's generally me that paints the detail. Not always. Ojin's pretty good at it himself these days. Depends on my, if my hand wants to stop shaking. Yeah. <sighs> Unfortunately, both of us have nerve damage in our hands. I've got... Oh, you, can't you can't really see it, but just where my thumb is... There is actually a little sun in the cloak for painting. Um, but so, yeah, unfortunately, the light's rendering out the detail. So, well, sorry about one, that. You can probably see in the sword, there's a gap right in the middle. There. Which will show a lot of detail on the blade edges. I'm assuming that they've taken that from many of the uh, ancient Chinese blades. Uh, yes. Blade catchers. Uh, a lot of these are like the other models bit broken there. And I'll just try to get through some of these because they are just identical to what we've always seen. Yeah, you get a lot of packs of the same marines basically so and these same units. Bits here. These are the actual add-ons and bit of side effects that you can actually add to your marines to make them stand out slightly different from the rest like the banners for example they're at top you can put them on the top of the backpacks to make them really stand out so they look completely different that one there under yeah. my finger is the banner excuse my nail paint a cat decided to scratch it off this morning <laughs> uh, yeah. You've yeah. Got, um, knives different heads even if Anna will point it out there it's got on top of the head there is a little like a Ro Roman underneath my finger there like a Roman headdress that I actually get on top of the Space Marines helmet <laughs> the things I like to call the Roman brush for the top yeah, of their helmets exactly yeah. uh, I know that's not its actual name so I apologise to the reenactors out there um, I'm not as well versed in it as you guys this is the start of the Land Raider you can see the LAS cannons on the side and the other parts that go on actually on top and little bits of the um, fuselage and so forth. This big bulky piece is the Land Raider chassis itself. As you can see, this thing is actually very, very large. Yeah. A very large vehicle. For those of you not into 40k, Land Raiders are basically the tanks. Um. I don't normally get GW stuff these days because I do feel like they've become overpriced, they've gotten greedy, but on the rare occasion that someone gets it as a gift, I'll accept it, and I'm not against GW, I just can't afford their over-exuberant prices for the very few things they do give. But this box sets like this are definitely worth it. This so is the rule book. It's still its seraphone wrap. Rule book for the Horace Heresy. Would you like to take it out of its cellophane wrap so people can see it? <laughs> reason I say this is it's all reflecting the light that I've put on. Okay. So I think just let me just get a little hole in it so I can get my finger in and get it out of the surfing rack. This brand spanking new horse heresy rule book with that in the back and extra sheets. <laughs> Taking the uh, Pokemon catchphrase, much Games Workshop. Collect them all. <laughs> <laughs> you got to admit, it's catchy. It is catchy. I can't blame them for it. I find there that ironically funny. So there you look at him brushing this book. <laughs> That's it there. The Horace Heresy rule book. With every... The only thing I hope is that they don't make this obsolete in about six months like they have been doing in recent years. Yeah. Um, because to me, that's a shame. Because yeah. not only are we all spending a lot of money to try and get armies assembled to play, but that's a lot of... When you look at the size of these books, this book, that's a lot of work going into it just for them to then void it in six months. It is. It is a lot of book, a lot of writing, a lot of research... <laughs> Especially when you look at things like that. Yeah, look at the art in them. It just that. wow. The age of the emperor with the emperor with his flaming sword in his hand there. There, if I take it just above the light, it takes the light shine off. So yeah, it you know they they 
really do put time and effort into these things. So it always does make me a bit sad and a little angry when they're quick to, you know, get rid of, get rid of and, and obsolete them. I mean, I get you have to make bi money in a business, but at least, you know, <laughs> milk your franchise for what it's worth before you void it. And we get a nice po Yeah. Yeah, this is what's in the box. Uh, what you could have got in a different set. Well, yeah. Um, if you got the £377 one, you would have got all them as well as what we've got here. All so, those yeah. tanks at the bottom as well. These are the extra bits. So yeah. which one's the Land Raider? Is it this right. one? No. This is if we got the upgraded okay. variant. Uh, Land Raider isn't in this one. That's the Land Raider. There we go. That's the assemblance manual for the Land That's Raider. That's the what Land it looks Raider like. right there. That's the content uh, Dreadnought. That's the attempt to Dreadnought there. And that there is a Cataphracty Terminator. And that's the two Lord variants. There. And the that one there, the tiny figure right there, is an ordinary marine. <laughs> Your typical space marine, <laughs> so basically. As, as you can see, the ordinary marine is absolutely tiny compared to the Dreadnought, the Land Raider, the Cataphracty Terminators and two lords. Mind you, these guys do make up the bulk of the army, so you really don't they want them too the big. They are the cannon fodder of the army, while these lot basically mow your enemies down with lots and lots of firepower. Not uh, only that, I mean, if you're going to have... If you think of it in a size ratio, you have a, a table, a battlefield table. You've only got so much room between the scenery and everything. So, yeah, if you've got a unit that's going to be in the many's, you need them to be sort of somewhat small so you can put them everywhere. Uh, as you can see, it actually does show in detail how much you can actually modify these characters to so. make them look the way you want them to look. And that is very nice way of doing things, to be honest. I so. like the variety. Games Workshop to have taken the art of IKEA manuals to a whole new level. Oh! <laughs> you don't even have words, just numbers. You also got that. You gotta collect them all. In the Pokemon <laughs> phrase, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and we have reference sheets for instant starting of battles, for everybody just to be able to use them straight off without any issue. Looking through the rule books. It has all the summaries, all the character types, the evading, and all the other abilities, including the hit charts, right there, allowing you just to be able to easily roll them off without having to spend ages looking through a codex or a handbook to look at them. Oh, they got plus four invulnerable. So. Uh, I have to admit, I used to hate that about 40k and Warhammer in general. You had to go digging through the rule book unless you were lucky to have someone with photographic memory, which our little group did at one point. I don't know if he still plays actually, because we've you know, not seen each other since our local games workshop store closed. Yeah. Um, our nearest one is now way up in Exeter. Um, of course, we got... Got the bases and the stickers. We've got stickers there. I have to get um, the what stickers I actually want for these because... He's going to be doing the, them as Dark Angels. As Dark Angels. This is Imperial Fists and Sons of Horus. The Sons of Horus is the eye. <laughs> Imperial Fists. I'm sorry. I seem to remember that we're a member of the Imperial Fists gaming guild on a few war games. Yeah. Perhaps we should keep some as Imperial Fists. And the Imperial Fists <laughs> one there. This is the dice, including all the um, dice rolls for that, um, basically, grenades that go away and so forth, right there. All the bases are there for the Marines and the Cataphracty Terminators. And <laughs> that's the Contemptor Dreadnought. That shows you how much bigger he is compared to the others. Yeah. And that, that's a pretty big base. I don't have the ruler with me either. No, nope, I don't have a tape measure with me. So, yeah, I could have shown you how big it was in the tape measure. My hands are small, but large <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, put that 
in there with them. That one there underneath there, so and anything there, else? Oh, and more bases. There's the other bases. Well, they're even smaller than the other bases, so That's that'll be for the Marines. marines. <laughs> That's for your cannon fodder. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, because of how they've they've done it, the bases are in these two side parts here with the dice. So they're kept nice and safe with the book in the middle, right there, with that on top, which would have been like that, with them. So it makes them look fancy and sort of gives them some form of bump protection. Pretty much, yes. Exactly. So it goes like that. And then these this model stuff goes back on top. Of course. So, yeah, as soon as I have the airbrush up and running, I mean, I've got to get it a new ca airline cable. And I think I need to clean the pins in it because it hasn't been used for a while because we haven't been able to paint for quite Ooh, a while. A couple since, of years. I think, what was it? We started in 2012 going pro. Uh, and then we had to cut it short after two years because I started getting um, Cape Pearl Tunnel in my left hand. And then Ojin started getting tremors from his medication, which meant we couldn't paint. But now we've found a new way of painting. Um, we're going to be trying that out. So you're going to be seeing us paint these. We haven't painted for a while, so we'll be heavily out of practice. We're not going to call ourselves pro painters for now. Not until I find my new jazz, as it were, um, for painting. Um, I did used to paint these professionally. So I will be showing you some of the pro tips but ultimately, if you are new to painting, I will say this. Don't be scared to get it wrong. And you never learn. You don't learn if you don't get it wrong. And if you don't like how it looks, just get a bit of something called Fairy Power Spray. Uh, acrylic paints come off pretty easily with that on a bit of a Q-tip. Um, or you can soak the models in and let the models fall apart and re-glue them and remodel them and repaint them. But I will say this. <clears throat> this is my pro tip because this is how I've done it. You see these sprues they are on? With your base sprays, it is easier to base spray them while they're on their sprues and clean up the points where you glue them than it is to, spray, to paint them as little models already assembled. And then you paint the pieces, you know, the, the main parts, not the details, just, you know, the base colours that you're coming up on their uh, armour with and so forth, and all their outfits if they're wearing cloth outfits. And you paint those before you glue them together. Once you have glued them together, then... And only then do you start the finishing touches of spraying, you know, outside of the, the base armor colors and so forth. Um, I learned to paint in the detail once they are assembled. Although in some cases, detail can get under things like cloaks and stuff once they're glued together. So it's easier to paint that detail before you fully assemble them. Uh, especially heads. Um, painting them before you put them on. Especially the face heads, if they've got no full helmet is better done before they're glued yes glue them to a toothpick and then paint. and paint them because of the eyes and the other extra bits yeah. of detail on their facial expressions that you want it to be shown because otherwise it's they just look generic and look very very boring yeah. and i will be showing you these steps or we will be showing you these steps because this painting thing is going to be something we're going to do probably do together because it's uh, going to take both we'll, of us to we'll paint show these you days. The stuff we got, the kit, the brushes, the paints, and showing you how we mix them together, and we'll show you the weathering abilities that we have as well for making them stand out. And then eventually, the last bit will be showing what we do to the bases. Now bear in mind, we haven't done this for a while, so it's going to be very amateurish. So you're coming from our, if you like, rebirth journey with us. Um, we're going to be starting it's, again. and It's going to be a nice journey for everybody. Yeah, so you can see how to build up and how to get better. And I will say this to all you artists out there. Don't try to copy each other. Take hints from each other, but ultimately you have got to find your own groove. Uh, it, not every artist... Or pro painter out there will do the same. My mentor, in a sense, was a guy called By Painted on YouTube. He's he's long since stopped doing his videos, sadly. Um, he, I think he's doing it more in house now. Um, but yeah, he he showed me many ways to paint the the phoenixes and all sorts from Warhammer, and a lot of these Warhammer ones. And it was him that got me into airbrushing. 
and the world airbrushing opened is amazing you can do so many on mass very quickly it's brilliant it used to take me months to paint an army and well, when airbrushing came about weeks well yeah you look at it you do you, you get a spray can to do the base coating you allow that to dry then you get the base main base of the army color and you go over the entire thing with your spray gun in that base army coat and then you bring it up you lighten the tone mm. so everything else then shows you can use like a bleached bone sort of color to show like um, the skulls if they've got skulls on the armor and you can show the, the different shiny silver parts that are actually on the armor as well and you can put reds like on the belts or on the bits of the tunic if they like you said they've got cloth or tunic on them and you could even take say for example your cutting knife and cut some lines into the armor to yeah. show scratches cutting knife don't do a me <laughs> <laughs> and show some scratches into the armor show some wear and tear and then you can highlight them in the paint as well to make them stand out it's just other ways to actually make your army look different from everybody else's and it's the uh, it's the best way to show your own um, creativity mm. in a sense so yeah um so like i said you're going to be coming with us on this journey as we try to find our new groove and our new painting style with the medical challenges we face i mean i i have um, repetitive stress injury and capral tunnel in my hand so that's one of the th problems of age i also have started to show signs of suffering with osteoporosis i don't think that's going to be too much of a problem to be fair i've got severe back injury so i can't bend over um, a lot i suffer from severe depression and i have a possible hernia that's not going to go treated until i start having severe pain because apparently they can't do anything until until it hurts until it hurts so i'm currently having those sort of issues at the moment as well and oh yeah i'm under complete security guard of growing my beard yeah he's not allowed near sharp objects so all sharp objects involving a knife will be done by me that's due to his depression and as for that guard under guard of growing his beard he will grow it so i can put be beads in it and plait it like odin's <laughs> He will have a Viking beard by the time I'm done with him. I promise you. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the first start of unboxing. And eventually we'll do another video that will actually show all the gear we've got together. The paints, the spray gun, uh, the brushes and the, and every other little bit. And then we'll be able to do first video of us starting to paint it. Uh, start painting uh, one, one of these models. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get some more models as well. Uh, we'll we'll build it up. I've got to buy the um, Age of Darkness uh, loyalist handbook, which actually has the actual army of lo of all the loyalists. There is no single handbook per loyalist faction. There's just one big hardback loyalist book for all the loyalists, as the same is for the Traitorous Legions, which is great in a sense. I personally think 40k actual series should have just done that. All one handbook for all the Space Marine Legions, not just a single handbook per legion. Like Blood Angels got his own handbook, which is 30 quid. Instead, no, you can just buy one book for loyalists, one book for traitors, and there, you got all of it. No need for buying extra hand extra handbooks. Unless you want them. No, because there is none. Yeah. But uh, in the case you, of the extra handbooks, unless you want them or you need them. Uh, unless but, you're buying, unless you're creating a traitorous legion, like Sons of Horus, you'll get a traitorous handbook as well. Okay. Um, basically, Loyalist covers all the Loyalist legions. Every single character. It's over, over 440 pages hardback. Again, the books in this selection of War and 40 Gay are all hardback. Which is why they're more expensive than the other GW 40k which has got the other legions separated into other handbooks which are all except for special edition hardbacks paperback but they're 40 pounds 
well it's £47.50 for the hardback loyalist legion book I'd rather get paid that for the hardback because they're more likely to survive than the paperback because they are not as durable <laughs> yes I remember the dreaded paperbacks especially with the old warhammer I call it older warhammer the medieval style warhammer paperbacks have this tendency of disintegrating after three or four uses um yeah, yeah. Uh, the other difference is in Horus Heresy Warhammer compared to 40k Warhammer Space Marine box sets in Horus Heresy are 20 models mm. not 10 now 10 in GW if I'm correct is about 30 pounds maybe 36 I can't remember offhand they are 4750 for 20 models in Horus Heresy now Terminators as well is slightly different as well Terminators in 40k are 5 models for £32. Horus Heresy is 10 models, again, for £47.50. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at double the models for a much healthier price. The only problem is the tanks are as expensive as the 40k. But there's more. They're bigger and there's more to them there's more detail in them than there are for others there's also more flying vehicles and the Primarchs which are over £90 a model are actually on a, a cinematic base with a model base slots into it so you've got your diorama base which is huge which is the things I like to do the dioramas and the single model base as well but the Primarch's models aren't plastic, they're resin, which is why they're so much more expensive. But these models really make your army stand out as a collect collection because they have that majestic bit to your army that makes it look so much nicer than just a generic lord at the front. You know, you might have painted that lord absolutely beautiful, but when you put him against the Primarch models, which have all this immense detail that you could literally really allow your creativity to flow into it will actually make your make your army really sharp stand out so hopefully we'll eventually get Lion L Johnson we'll show him unboxed as well if there's any viewers out there that would um, like to help us with that you know we're, <laughs> we're more than welcome or if Games Workshop want to sponsor us hint hint Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Do. We'll we'll accept that sponsorship yeah. it, if you offer. Um, because this is going to be a long journey. We will be doing lots of this. Oh um, gosh, we'll be showing you how the well, army grows. On Lone Wolf Gaming, it may not always be for Gosh. Gosh is the charity mm -hmm. event we're doing. So if there are any viewers right now, please can you make a donation to Gosh? The links will be available in the description. Yeah, all the links. So we can do is click on the links and. Donate as much as you want. There's no pressure on how much you donate, but making a donation to GOSH is for a very, very good reason. It's for helping children, basically. GOSH stands for Great Ormond Street Hospital, but it also ends with and children's charity. Uh, their focus is on specialist care for children. Um, um, no other hospital I'm aware of can even provide the level of care that they do. So and every penny that goes to GOSH helps a child's life improve dramatically or helps towards their specialist care. This is for the next generation. That's what we should all be helping for. Yes. The next generation are the future of our race. They are our tomorrow. And today is borrowed upon the backs of tomorrow. So, so it's important we protect our tomorrow and, and help them in any way we can. So this is the un first unboxing of the Age of Darkness or the Warhammer, the Horus Heresy box as you saw we will eventually be showing you all the equipment we'll be having and we'll be using to paint these models and hopefully we'll have more boxes that we'll eventually buy and we'll add them to this collection of videos showing us how we paint them what we do with them basing and everything bit by bit you will follow us on this journey and i hope everybody will enjoy it and find inspiration 
from it. So thank you to those family members that uh, got together and got us this box. Yeah. Um, it's it's probably started us back into the hobby. I mean, I'm buffed. Yes, I'm one of those rare nerdy girls, okay? I'm into gaming, and that includes miniatures yeah. and D&D. So That's we'll, how I met Ojin, actually. So. <laughs> so we'll be doing this on a journey together. We'll have a whole video collection uh, of it. Literally, we'll put a video collection of it, starting from this one, which is the beginning. And um, we'll go on this journey. It's probably also worth mentioning, we've got a lot of old boxes from 2012 and 2013 upstairs of Warhammer um, and, and, or, and 40k. Yeah. Uh, what will probably happen to those now, because they are obsolete models, is we'll turn them into dioramas. Yeah, we probably um, will do. Because a lot of those models are very old high elven models for the Warhammer. Uh, they are no longer um, usable. They are literally... They wet. are literally either lead or white metal. Yeah. Or, you know, they're now out of print to the point they are collectibles at this point. We will not be parting with these. No. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing that. Hopefully what we'll do is, if Anna's mobile is working correctly, when we eventually finish with this, we'll have the entire set on the table that we've got in the kitchen we'll have them all there painted basted and everything i'll try and get my phone camera working for and that <laughs> we'll hope, like i said we'll hope we get the phone camera working for that and we'll be able to show you the entire collection when it's finished so yep um what we might do with some of the old models um is i'll do them into dioramas and we might put them onto our website and get that active again um and sell them as merchandising um so we'll see um There'll More. be little dioramas, yeah. though, things that you could probably put into your own dioramas if you wanted to. Uh, if you do do that, please make sure you credit us to the models that we painted unless you repaint them, which will be perfectly up to you if, if we sell them on. So, yeah, we've got an idea of what we're going to do uh, with this army. I want to add um, one more tank to this, to this collection, one more Dreadnought. I've got the idea of the Dreadnought I want to get, which is the Leviathan. Oh, so only the most expensive one. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not. It's £60 for the complete set of Leviathan, which has all different arms to go with it, and the body and the base. So that's that. The Dreadnought, uh, the, the tank I haven't thought of yet. Um, I've looked at them. There, there is a few there that I've liked the look of, um, but I hadn't pinned pin down on it. And... Of course, Lion L. Johnson. So, the two I've got pinned down that I want to add to it, which is the Primarch. Uh, he's the most expensive of the two so far because he's £98. But like I said, he is complete resin, mm. which explains why he's so expensive. It's because he's resin. He's a lot more to make. Oh, well, yeah, as long as GW don't do their usual thing, send out Ooh, a resin model. Yeah, send out a model so full of air bubbles you spend more time fixing it with green stuff than you actually paid for. So that, that is always some beef I've had with you, I'm afraid, Games Workshop, is that you do not quality check your stuff at, at factories. If you quality checked it at factory level, you wouldn't get this problem with air bubbles. Now, I don't mind re-sculpturing certain parts of the models with green stuff and, and fixing them. But when I, I with your resin stuff on multiple occasions, I have ended up fixing three quarters of the model to the point I may as well have re-sculpted the entire model and made a whole new model. That That's not good. Games Workshop. No, that, that, that's something you know. I'm, I'm critiquing you on. It's an, an area you really need to improve on. You need to keep us, your customers, happy. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to keep buying. Um, and that would be sad because I have many, many fond childhood memories with Games Workshop. Yeah. Um, because I got into Games Workshop Citadel stuff through the original Warhammer. I'm afraid, guys, I'm a Wood Elf player. I, I love to the Wood Elf, so I'm really annoyed with what's been done with the Wood Elves in the current update. Um, I miss them. Instead, we've got some weird forest of the old world and the Elven Alliance. I'm sorry, I didn't like the High Elves. Mm -hmm. uh, I found them boring as Poncy units. Peacocks. I call them Ponzi Peacocks and I often play Wood Elves versus High Elves. His High Elves, by the way. He's a High Elf player. <laughs> I like the show-offness. He likes the show-offness, where I like the ambush guerrilla tactics of the Wood Elves. Uh, I also so, like their units. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that's the plan so 
we'll be getting these extra models bit by bit because of um, how expensive they are. We're not going to get them all lump sum at, at the same time. That's absolutely physically impossible. Um, so we'll be starting on this. We'll get the extra bits, but as soon as we get the extra models that we get, that, that we plan to get the three extra models, which is Primark, Leviathan, Siege, Dread, Contempt to Dreadnought, and the, the extra tank, when they arrive, we'll do a video of them being unboxed. Okay. Especially the Primark. So until the next video, which will be showing our, our equipment that we'll be using and the paints, that's it for now. Okay. So I'll see if you're watching this on YouTube. I'll see you guys later this evening at six o'clock when I'll be streaming, I think it's Halo tonight. Um, so, yep, um, as you've probably worked out by now, my real name, or real name in short, is Anna. Odin's real name is David. So, <laughs> he can't really pull that off as well as, as some of the things I've seen in Star Wars. Um, oh, hot fuzz. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, yeah. Everyone else, of course, online actually knows me by my screen name of Black Fox Kitsune, or here, or here on Twitch, it's Black Fox Kitsune Lone Wolf. I will be shortening that because I do have access to my original account, which I've just changed the name of. So in two weeks, Black Fox Kitsune Lone Wolf will be shortened to my actual name of Black Fox Kitsune. My other one will be Yatesha Kadera, which I will reserve for my Star Wars stuff. So got Star Wars gameplay and cosplaying as a Mandalorian. Um, when I get my gear up and running again. Um, I had to sell my old kit. Um, one, because I outgrew it, and two, because I needed the money at the time. And, Sorry. yeah. So, you know, when I get that going, and all you can see is my elbow, sorry. <laughs> 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 and the fish in the background. He's here somewhere. I'm here somewhere, at right this side of the camera. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll be seeing you later. So... Yep, Yatesha Kadera, remember that one. You'll see her among my followers somewhere because I use her to admin mode on my PC. And yeah, um, that'll be for my Star Wars stuff. So I, I don't imagine it'll be very active for a while. It's probably just going to be a, a random channel I don't use for a long time. Black Fox Kitsune is going to be my main streaming channel where I'm going to be streaming all sorts of variety things. You will see Ojin on once in a while. I'm going to encourage him to start his own stream as well at some point. Um, He's got to get to learn OBS and the other various uh, platforms and find out which one works for him. Mm -hmm. um, I've also, we've also got to get him all the stream deck stuff, like the microphone, the light, and his own webcam. <laughs> which we've only just done for you at the moment. Yeah. I mean, we were lucky. I'm going to say that. We, I found it. He found them on <laughs> on Amazon at discount prices. I mean, otherwise it was going to be well over 100 We managed to get it all for under 30 quid. I so got the light, the, the mix go, and the uh, arm and the mic. Yeah, and that's because we caught them on the deal. So if you are around and you, you want the the mic and the camera and the thing, and the light, uh, you can get ring lights as, for as little as seven pounds on various. Uh, yeah, just just type in ring lights for streaming, and you you don't need a fancy expensive stream light. Um, that was uh, you know, the, 16 pounds. The one I've got is 16 pounds, but you can get them for as little as 8 pounds in some places. Uh, depends how big of a light you need. I don't need a very big light, so the 16 pound one was okay. Um, it's not very mobile, though. <laughs> no, it's um, not. <laughs> the one thing I'm probably going to need is a mobile camera. Not, not a physical mobile phone mobile camera, but a physical camera for streaming mobile type camera. Um, but that's, that's, you know on the the long haul sort of thing because those are expensive um so unless someone gifts that to me i'm, I'm not really going to get a camera <laughs> not, that won't be a, a thing anytime soon so i'm afraid it's going to be on my phone which as you can see is currently not really wanting to play ball um, <laughs> it logs in when it wants to logs in when it doesn't so that's that'd be and taking loads a, up things that you don't want it yeah to load up. <laughs> so it's going to be taking a visit to a, a store later today um to get it fixed um, because it's the touch screen that's the problem. It, it's either being oversensitive on one half of the phone or not at all on the other side. So something's happened to the sensors. So as you can see today, we unboxed the Age of Darkness box set, the starting box set for the Horus Heresy Warhammer 40k. This is a completely different game setting. 
this box stuff cannot be used in the up-to-date Warhammer 40k. This is stuff all set before that. In so other words, it's its own setting. Its own setting. This is why the rule books are completely different. The rule it's settings. like the difference between Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 and 5th edition. <laughs> yeah. um, you can intermingle stuff if you're a creative DM. If you're a Pathfinder. Um, but as I say, I think a lot of us have started to fall into Pathfinder's more creative, less rule lawyer yeah. methods. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, this actually is Forge World, not GW. It's why I can see. Yeah, there's... that's there. It's Forge World. It's which is Warhammer dot com, which is there. It's actually Forge World, not GW. So this actually came from Forge World, but because Forge World has now not got its own website, it's actually on the GW website. They're partnered with GW partnered, now. So you can actually order Forge World stuff, which is a lot better quality than GW, because Forge World actually quality well, they, yeah, they quality actually quality check, check their, their stuff. Their models. So yeah, so hopefully we'll be getting those extra three models that will add to this army, and then when it's all put to done because you'll see us on this journey put it all together painting it as we go and you'll be able to see it for the full army eventually put together and on display and yep and for those of you that like nerdy stuff i will be putting details of the equipment we use the name of the equipment uh, so that you can look it up for yourself um all the technical stuff so that'll all be in the descriptions of the videos as we do them um we may be streaming some of these, so you may see it on Twitch, um, but we're definitely going to be uploading it to the Lone Wolf Clan's um, YouTube. Um, unfortunately, I lost my original channel, but uh, Lone Wolf Clan was a shared group channel at one point. Uh, unfortunately, most of us have either passed away or moved on to other things. Um, so me and Ojin are the original two left for the Lone Wolf Clan now. Because uh, sadly, a number of us have passed away, or we've fallen out and gone our different directions, or life's just taken us in different directions. So, yeah, it's, it's have yeah, life happens basically. Um, we are looking for more people to join the clan um, as a as a community, I and mean, I still have the Discord group for that. Um, but unfortunately, the people that are in there. <laughs> Uh, only a couple are really very active and, and they don't really stream or do anything online and the ones that do stream do their own thing, which is fine. You know, I've got nothing against people doing their own thing. Uh, that's, it's supposed to be a collective group that bring back the fun to gaming. So, And if you are interested in joining the Lone Wolf Clan, just, you know, hop on to our Discord server um, and maybe, you know, we can collab at some point. I don't want people losing their individuality by joining the Lone Wolf Clan. We're not no. exclusive. I refuse to be exclusive. Like I said earlier, I'm in a, a gaming guild called um, Imperial Fists, which is for the war games that are online. So I don't exclusive say, you know, if you're in the Lone Wolf Clan, you can only be in the Lone Wolf Clan. I, I hate when people do that. that. That's not how you network. That's not how you make friends. So, yeah, if you're in gaming guilds, you're still welcome with us. Other gaming guilds are welcome to join us. So, yeah. Um, by all means, you know, come join the fun. I'll put the links below in the description. And, uh, yep. Yeah. So see you later tonight when I'm streaming live. Yep. Yeah. Have okay. fun, everybody. That's Ojin and Black Fox out. See you later. See you later.